Thank you, thank you, Rocky. Appreciate that. So good to be back here at VS Live. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm Tim. I've been doing this a long time. Uh, what the heck is what the heck are emerging experiences? Anyone? I don't know what they are either, to tell you the truth. That's a marketing term that Microsoft made up. What we're going to talk about today is everything cool, everything high tech, everything new. It's cognitive services and machine learning. It's the HoloLens. It's uh, fancy 3D cameras like this one. I'm going to do a lot of fragile demos, and Danny's going to help me. Um, and by, you, don't, you don't need to babysit me right now, Danny. Yeah. Thank you, Danny. <laughs> Danny's going to help me in a minute here, and I'm going to make him show you some code. We're mostly developers here, right? Yes? All right. So, so I'm so old, now that Rocky brought that up, I'm in the Visual Studio documentary that was on Discovery Channel. That's how old I am. Uh, I'm, clearly, I'm comfortable in front of an audience. You may not know me, because I'm, you know, throughout my career, I've been standing next to the big guy. But I've been around. I got a lot of stories, but we're, we're being recorded today, so I can't say any of them, because they all have the F word in them. <laughs> all right? But I stand between you and lunch. God knows why they did that. No, I'll be respectful of, of that. And then um, I'm headed to the lunch. I think they call it birds of a feather here. And there's a table where I will sit. And uh, I love to talk about this stuff. And I'll have the HoloLens with me. So feel free to join me. You don't know me. You don't know my company. Or you may not know my company. But you're certainly using some of the software we built. In fact, if you're using Windows or iOS or one of the other OSs, you're undoubtedly using some of the stuff we built. Uh, most of the work we cannot talk about, so I talk about it anyways. The, these are the ones we can talk about. Our customers go, you know, the, the, the three big software companies to ABC, NBC, CNN. Not ESPN yet, but that's on my target. Um, a lot of broadcast TV, NASA, stuff like that. And I'm going to show you a lot about that today. Here's famous people. I've got some marketing slides up here. Uh, if you know me or seen me speak before, I'm going to plow through some PowerPoint really quickly. And then it's just going to be demo, 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 demo. And we'll all go like this that the network holds up. All right, so here's famous people using our software. You don't care. Here's what we're going to talk about. Emerging experiences. You may have also heard this term, more personal computing. If you follow Satya Nindela, the CEO of Microsoft, who joined just a few months after I did in the late 90s. He was just a little PM at the time. Satya Nindela, great guy. Um, by the way, I'm not a Microsoft employee. You know, I'm a hired gun. Uh, I run these, these other companies. And, and uh, you know, so I'm allowed to praise Microsoft where they're great and uh, belittle them where they're not so good. And $25 billion for LinkedIn? Wow. Wow. I, I, someone needs to explain that to me with beer tonight. All right? I see we have some celebrities in the audience. Um, so more personal computing. It's this, this wrapper, this marketing term around um, all these devices and high tech and, and making our lives, our digital uh, lives, a lot more analog. And I'll, I'll explain that and show you that. We're also going to show and talk about uh, some of this technology, this hardware technology. And because we're mostly developers here, are there any designers in the room that are brave enough to raise their hand? Any evil networking people in the room that prevent us software developers from shipping code? OK, good. It's all my people. Beautiful. So we're going to talk about how this, all this hardware makes our lives so much better. And then, of course, demo, demo, demo. Um, this, you may have heard this term NUI, the natural user interface. For me, it's waving at it. It's touching it. It's speaking to it. It's thinking at it. Believe it or not, we have neural interfaces these days, thinking at software. Why would you do that? Consider. Uh, paraplegic or quadriplegic, someone with MS in a wheelchair and thinking their way to steering a wheelchair. That stuff is becoming real. 
Um, I'm going to show you some of uh, this crazy stuff here in a minute. And, and it's manifested in a bunch of these devices. So trying to go quick so we can get to the good stuff. All right, I love this demo because the story behind it is kind of cool. We built this software a long time ago. Um, Danny may know how long ago this was. Uh, this is everybody Mc, but McDonald's. Um, the story here is these folks came to us and said, uh, with a science document that said basically, if a human orders this type of food and doesn't have to interact with another human, then they will upsize. They'll put five pieces of cheese on a hamburger. They'll put five patties on a hamburger. Um, it's scary. You know, we're at Internology, we're very proud of the cancer research software we do. And a lot of the projects we're very proud of. Um, but we, I have to keep the lights on, right? So we're also building software for the, the companies that are build, killing the world with their cheeseburgers. Anyways, <laughs> you, you may have seen this. You may have used this. Um, but there's a kiosk in these types of restaurants. And you walk in, and you know, yeah, I want the new combo. And I'll make it a double combo. And yeah, I want that sourdough jack. And of course, I want large fries. And you better believe I want mozzarella sticks. I'm just touching the screen here. Obviously, this is just a, a demo front end for the actual kiosk. And naturally, I want six instead of three, and I'll have a Diet Coke. I didn't, I didn't, drag, <laughs> I didn't drag any you know, che pieces of cheese or, or stuff like that. But you get the idea. And in one of these fast food restaurants cases, Carl's Jr. and Hardee's, which you do have here in this part of the world, you literally walk to the kiosk, swipe your ATM card. It gives you a number, and a bag appears. You never talk to a zit-faced teenager that is questioning you because, you know, of this, right? It, it's scary science. And what's cool is this is just WPF. This is XAML, right? This is .NET done like seven or eight years ago. Um, just, just amazing how far we've come. So th this was like, you know, led the, the, the path for touch and, and, and touch-based systems. Um, but we've come a long way, so I'm going to build to that. So anyone recognize this? If you have gray hair, you might recognize this. If you ever saw Bill Gates speak in his Digital Decade speech, he always referred to this. This is Moore's Law. Moore's Law basically says every, Moore's Law was a prediction that every two years, we'd be able to stuff twice as many transistors on a circuit board. To software people, eh, what does that mean? Um, ultimately, it means faster, right? Well, Moore's law uh, is still on track. Some people claim it is slowed down. And you can see this, this is the closest thing I could get to an updated one, which ends in um, Sandy Bridge or Ivy up there. Um, the thing about Moore is that um, his, his law, 50 years later, is still on track. It was just a magazine article. If you don't recognize his name, he later founded Intel. At the time, he was just a scientist that for a photography company, something like that, a, a, a camera manufacturer. Um, Intel now bases their product planning on Moore's Law. In fact, all high-tech companies base product planning on the assumption that we'll be able to cram twice as many circuits or um, transistors on a circus board, circuit board. This is an uncanny prediction. Um, and it's amazing it's, it's still executing. Why? It has spawned all of these other laws. So there's some, there's some legitimate laws on the screen there. Tim's law is, I'm not going to buy it now because next year it's going to be half the price. Right? So I never end up buying anything. Um, and it's going to be twice as fast and twice as awesome. Right? That's Tim's law. So check out this. This is what's scary, interesting, and relevant to us. This essentially is Moore's law mapped against the performance of the CPU. And if you stare at the top right, you can see that currently, 
computers are calculating at the speed of which small animals process in their brains. You can also see that we're right on track around 2025 to have computers calculate as quickly as the human brain. <gasps> what is that? That's not scary, actually. That doesn't mean computers are going to be smarter. It's just they're going to be calculating that much quicker. That means machine learning will be that much more effective. It is kind of crazy, scary, interesting, because all this hardware stuff means our world in software gets a lot better, right? It gets a lot faster. It, it, it gets a lot more productive, and it gets all good. So you, you, you may have noticed when you signed up for VS Live, they have this political theme, you know, this election trail. Well, we build cancer research software and a lot of software, and we're killing the world with our cheeseburgers. But believe it or not, Windows and .NET run the United States presidential elections and have for years. We build this stuff. Um, this is the reason I brought Danny up here with me. This is a big day for Danny. I don't know if you went to his sessions, but he did two sessions back to back, and now he's going to do a demo for me. So come on up here, Danny. This is Danny Warren, brilliant young engineer from Internology. Um, let me set this up. I assume not everyone is familiar with the Iowa caucus. It's this bizarre tradition in the United States by which delegates make a representation vote of who they think they want to be president. When was this? May? Uh, the caucus? Yeah. It was in January. January, long time ago. Well, months ago. Um, and we build the voting apps. For the first time in United States history, the vote in the Iowa caucus was done completely electronically on computers. But we didn't just build one voting app, right? We can't just build for Windows. We can't build for the Windows phone only because no one owns them. <laughs> I don't need, that's not actually supposed to be funny. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even own one anymore. I wish I owned one, uh, but I don't own one. And then we, um, we uh, also built the, um, these like portal dashboard things. Basically, we built them internal, right? And, and unfortunately, Wolf Blitzer of CNN announced the URLs live to 200 plus million people. I say unfortunately because when you don't build Azure to scale like that, guess what happens? It doesn't. <laughs> and on this part, it was this part of the world, right? Yeah, we had some issues on this part of the world on the Republican side, so it was okay. That's supposed to be funny. All right, Danny, take it away. All right. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the architecture that we did to make sure that we could develop these mobile apps quickly and effectively. The, uh, the challenge we had is that if we implemented each individual platform, it would look something like this, where we have a C-sharp implementation for Windows, a Dalvik for Android, and a Swift for iOS. But the challenge there is that caucuses are not straightforward, especially on the Democratic side. They have very strict rules and ways that groups work, and that business logic is really confusing and really difficult to work with. So having to re-implement that three different times and ensure that it's absolutely correct was going to be a nightmare. So we relied on Xamarin, which took us to an architecture diagram more like this, where we have a couple of DLLs that represent the shared logic. And then that shared logic is then able to be used by all the different UI platforms, whether it's Windows, iOS, or Android. The cool part about that is we could develop the rules for the caucus once, test it once on one platform, and know it was going to work on all the other platforms. And then we could just do UI testing on all the other platforms to ensure that they were functioning correctly from a UI perspective. One of the apps or pages I want to show you today is this viability calculator. This is how the Democrats decided how many user, or users, how many uh, of their uh, caucus members had to be in each group in order for that group to be viable to vote for a specific candidate. So I'll switch over to my machine here. And here we can see some of the code in Visual Studio. And if I open up our Solution Explorer, 
we'll see we have four different common projects here. These common projects have all of our uh, business models. It has all of the logic on how those models should apply their uh, rules. And then it also has our view models, which in the MVVM world is setting up all of our data to be interfaced with from the UI. Now, Android and iOS don't support binding out of the box, and Windows does through XAML. But the benefit here is that you can design a view model that is still very highly usable from Android and iOS and still bindable uh, supporting in Windows. So we took that approach when doing all of our work. Excuse me. So here is, um, in our view models, we'll go see the viability calculator view model and open that up. And here we have some delegates and we have some eligible attendees. So if I switch back over to our view of the page that we're implementing, we have two text boxes, one for delegates, one for eligible attendees, and then a button that will click to do the calculation to figure out the viability. So this view model has all of those things. On iOS and Android, instead of binding those values in, we'll just pass them straight through into the values. And on Windows, we can bind. I'll show you our Windows app here. This is the infrastructure or the architecture of our Windows app. Not only did we have to support all three platforms, but we had to support two different parties. And so to do that, we were able to leverage the power of shared projects and share all that code as much as possible. So I can come into our very core shared Windows project and go under Pages and find the viability calculator page and allows us to see what's on here. In here, uh, the simple things to call out is a text box here, which is bound to delegates, and another text box, which is bound to the eligible attendees. And then there's a button further down that allows us to uh, actually call into our, uh, our view model. So if we look in here in the page code behind, we are in the unnavigated to, we're setting up that view model. So when that page is navigated to, we're getting it all prepared, ready to go. And we can scroll down and see that we call the calculate button click, and it just calls the calculator view model that calculate click. Because delegates are not supported in iOS and Android, we made a conscious decision to forego delegate uh, and, do, and not do delegate commands and I command bindings so that we could keep some consistency between all the platforms to aid us in determining where we had logic issues. In Android, we can come into our shared project under our activities and find our viability calculator activity. And here we see a similar pattern. When we have our on create of the activity called, we can call the initialized view model, which then initializes the same view model that we had in our Windows project. And when we click our button in the Android side, we get the same calculate visibility. We didn't have to rewrite any of our business logic. All we had to do was call into it. And finally, on iOS, because it's a slightly different project structure and, and how iOS works, we had to do linked files. And uh, we hosted everything mainly in our Democrat, uh, our Dems application. So here's our viability calculator view model. And we see uh, when that view mod or view controller, sorry, when that view controller is loaded, then we're able to get our view model all squared away like we had on the Android side and the Windows side and call into that when we touch on the button on that page. So what's amazing about this is we took about two thirds of our development time for just the logic out of our application. This significantly reduced tested time and ensured that this application was ready for the Iowa caucuses, which is a big deal. It's one night for four hours. You have to make sure you get it right the first time. And we were able to do that leveraging Xamarin. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you, Danny. Thanks. So are you happy? You're happy you got to see code in a keynote. You know, short of Scott Guthrie, I don't think that ever happens. You all know who Scott Guthrie is, right? He started just a couple months after me. Uh, now I gotta tell you a great Scott Guthrie story. Did you, you know that Scott Guthrie invented 
essentially invented ASP.NET over a weekend. You ever hear that story? Oh, this is a great story. Mark Anders, who was a brilliant PM, this would be like 99 late, 2000 before .NET. And Mark Anders said, so Scott, what if we, um, what if we, what if we inter built a ISAPI filter and intercepted some tags that we interject into HTML? And that way we could have like live database calls and use you know, live data in a web page. And Scott went like, he, he was just graduated from Duke University, really geeky kind of young guy and with glasses. And, and he looks and he's like, and that was on a Friday. On Monday, he came back and said, here it is. Essentially, the prototype for ASP.NET. Is that not awesome? We should get Scott to keynote instead of me. Hey, um, uh, we also do this type of stuff. Uh, the, your, this, this is a, a two-week party of your tax dollars that is held every four years. Maybe it's a six-week party of your tax dollars. And if you remember in the last election, we built the voting apps where the Democrats and the Republicans you know, picked their, their ticket, their president and vice presidential candidate. And if you remember the last election, we had an incumbent. You know, Obama was going to go for his second term. So it's really kind of silly to vote for him. If he, it's a foregone conclusion the Democrats are going to put him on the ticket, right? Well, no, your tax dollars had to be spent to, to make sure all the delegates voted for Obama. The interesting story about this, and, and you can see it's beautifully styled, and I don't need to show you, to demo it for you, because you're essentially saying Obama, and you're doing a slider with all the delegates in your state. The interesting thing about this story is we trained the delegates. Do you know these crazy people, delegates? You, you watch this stuff, right, on TV? Oh, you'll know in just a few weeks, you're going to see them. They're crazy people. They, they, they get all dressed up weird and, and hot, hoot and holler and shout around. Anyways, um, six weeks to train them on how to use the app, to pick Obama and then you know, pick the amount of uh, delegates in their state. So come, come convention day, guess what happens? What's my username and password? Swear to God. What's my username and password? Your username for six weeks has been the two character uh, abbreviation of the state you're in. Right? For me, it's CA, California. For you, it's MA. I assume most of you are from Massachusetts or in the area. Right? That's your username, CA. And your password is the state you're in plus the year we're in. So it would be CA 2016 if you want to break in and vote for someone other than Trump in a couple weeks. Um, <laughs> right? And they forgot that. Believe it or not, they forgot that. The reason I tell that story is we're, we're coming to a place where facial recognition will finally be your password. All three major credit cards within the next few months will we'll use this. I, I use the waving technique as opposed to just straight in front of you because it, it gets like a 3D mesh of your face. We're coming to a world where facial recognition is going to be real. Um, I think I'm all supposed to, oh, okay, let me plow through this. I believe on network TV you'll see this. These are God's gift to data visualizations of the um, election of the President of the United States. You're going to see those on TV. I'm probably not supposed to show you this either. Uh, la di da di da You've seen this. I would challenge you if someone in the room has not seen this. This has been seen by the civilized world now for about a decade. This is the, the on-air broadcast software for CNN. Uh, we build this also. It goes without saying that we're building features into it right now because John King and Wolf Blitzer and Anderson Cooper are really a great client, a great customer. They come up with great ideas and we scratch our heads and go, God, that is a great idea. Now can you pay us to build that? <laughs> um, so um, let, I, should, I should probably demo that for you. Yeah, why don't I do that? So there we go. You're familiar with this. I believe this is current data like real data, obviously I'm not using the real on broadcast air app. I've got it contained on my computer, the demo version, but this is real data as of like a couple weeks ago. Let's switch to the demographic side. 
Yeah, because Clinton is up a little bit more. Um, of interest, this, you know, everybody's seen this application on TV, and I'm not John King, so I barely can demo this. Um, but uh, what's interesting about this application is it's SLA. I assume many of you, if not all of you, have to commit to some type of service level agreement on your applications. Um, we hear this term triple nines all the time. You know, triple nines basically is three days down a quarter, if you, if you pencil it out. Um, and, and certainly Azure and, and Office 365 and some of the other vendors, they all have SLAs, triple nines. You've heard uh, quadruple nines for some special thing like banking and things like that. This is one of those apps that has to run 100% 24-7. Um, and it's kind of funny because we were, when we first were building this app, by the way, this is WPF and this is DirectX. In fact, this is God's gift to WPF app apps. It's millions of lines of code. But as we were building this in the last election, we were exposing issues in the XAML stack. Not our issues, issues on the Microsoft side. And, and as we showed Microsoft these issues, um, they fixed them one by one. Anyways, we went to the, the, our director of engineering, who by the way, you can tell this is a demo app, because he went to Stanford, and he put that in there just to piss me off, because I hate Stanford. I'm a Notre Dame guy. Um, so in, in any event, we went to CNN and said, uh, we're having issues. You know, the, the app is bleeding memory. And um, it's don't, don't panic, because we'll just recycle the app. It's so Windows, right? We'll just reboot <laughs> at commercial break, and everything will be fine. And the producer of CNN says, do you know this story? The producer of CNN says, you realize we don't have commercial breaks during the election, right? We go 13 straight hours. And if your app doesn't run, you'll never work in this business again. So we got it to run, 100%, 24-7. You can do that in Windows. Here, let me show you something I'm not supposed to show you, that the world, just because I know it's on my computer. Yeah, OK, cool. It's not rendering quite correctly, because I don't have enough resolution on these big projectors. But um, this is what you're going to see on CNN uh, coming up for the conventions. And uh, you know, I am not the type of guy to demo this. This is definitely a John King thing. But what they'll do, you, you understand this concept of super delegates, or they're essentially uncommitted delegates. These are the powerful ones you know, that want to be on TV or want to get all the PR. They know who they're voting for, trust me. But they, they hold it to the last minute. So John King will say things like, well, what if, you know, on the Republican side, the state of Georgia, you know, goes over to Cruz or gives all their, their votes to Trump? And they'll model all this. You're going to see this on CNN coming up. And, and uh, I'm being recorded, and now I'm in trouble. So let's, let's just let go of this and move on, all right? Um, this is interesting. Um, in the last election, John King announced to 250 million people, hey, you know, y'all love us following the magic wall on TV. Now you can follow along on the web. And at the time, uh, and we're, at, we're on CNN's website here, at the time, um, we had broke the uh, Azure, let me get to presidential. There we go. I, my, uh, my fingers are on the screen. At the time, we broke the scale records for Azure. Um, think about this. If you're into scale, this is kind of cool. When Wolf Blitzer announced this on CNN, and all my wife and all those other people that are into this, I am not, to tell you the truth, but on their iPads, they all went to this website. We were pushing three terabytes a second through the API. Three terabytes a second through the API. We were ready for that one. Yeah. It was the other one we weren't ready for. Um, that's a lot. And guess what the Azure bill was? We pushed three terabytes a second for like two or three hours. And the Azure bill wasn't what you'd think it would be. It wasn't like $100,000. It was like 2500 or something like that. Because you can architect for scale in Azure. 
which I think is cool. I mean, that's, that's the reason to do cloud-based stuff. All right, we need to get, move on to the um, cool stuff, right? And I get, need to get rolling. All right, 3D cameras. Um, that, these are these things. We, uh, unfortunately, we live in a world where, and, and after me showing you a bunch of stuff today, you're now gonna see them. We live in a world where there are real bad guys. Not just here locally, but they're all over the world now. If you, next time you wander into a hotel, when you leave this room, just look around. There, there are cameras everywhere. Uh, 3D cameras are amazing, and that's because of surveillance, because of security, in, in case it's not you know, incredibly obvious. 3D cameras are amazing because we can um, pick faces out of a crowd and detect movement and identify objects. I don't know if you're familiar with Microsoft Cognitive Services but it's a machine learning based, Microsoft research based set of 21 services that are currently free that you can use in your .NET applications. Actually, they're, they're platform agnostic, so if you wanna call them in Java, go for it. Um, but it, it has stuff like object recognition. You may or may not have seen the, the demo at Build of the blind guy who could see. If you haven't seen this, you need to see this video from Build. The, he has this, this engineer at Microsoft, Shaqib, he, he has this set of glasses, and they're essentially a small hollow lens. And he does a gesture, and it'll describe what's in front of him. You know, young teenager on a skateboard doing a trick, a uh, woman throwing a frisbee, um, man somewhat engaged in what you're talking about. <laughs> right? Just amazing stuff. Um, 3D ha cameras help us do this. There are a number of them. The Kinect for Windows, the version 2 one, um, is, my, in my personal opinion, currently the most powerful one, but it has some glaring huge weaknesses that I'll show you in a second. It's only 150 bucks, though. It's amazing what these things can do. Um, Leap is the one that, that uh, measures your fingers. I love this Orbic Astra, brand new in beta because it sees farther and better than the current Kinect. It's still in beta. Anyways, I'm just showing you that the Kinect doesn't dominate the world. So if you've not seen what a Kinect does, let me, and this is a good test to make sure that everything is working. Well, I, have a, um, I have a Kinect device right here. Ooh. Uh, up in the corner. So, ooh, now I'm gonna get reverb from this speaker. Uh, see my hands? Here, let me, let me get it up there so you can see. There we go. So the depth camera is on the, is on the left. That's what help us, helps us with facial recognition and recognizing objects. But notice, notice me, and it's got you guys too, this camera right here. Uh, hands open, hands closed. See that red? Fingers. Right? That, that's kind of amazing that a camera could see like that. So why am I showing you that? That's, the, that's called skeletal tracking or body tracking. Um, I'm showing you that because I don't need to show you digital signage, right? It's everywhere. I don't need to show you interactive digital signage. There's some screenshots. Top right, uh, they're, believe it or not, they're here in this part of the world. That's a cooler that you would see in 7-Eleven or a grocery store. It's a transparent HD touchscreen as the door. So it has this interactive content that doesn't target the technology elite, right? You are not the user. You are not the demographic that the CPGs are targeting. In fact, you're the opposite of the demographic that CPGs, uh, consumer packaged goods, the food makers, the Cokes, the Pepsis, Nestle, those big companies. They're target, targeting millennials, and they're trying to get them to up, they're trying to upsell them, and they're trying to get them to purchase things, right? But the, and so there's a 3D camera embedded in these coolers that if it sees, you know, white male 25 to 35, then it might switch it to Pepsi. White male overweight 45 to 55, he gets Diet Pepsi, right? <laughs> Um, but it's also looking for the bad guy. It's looking for the terrorists. 
It's looking for the criminals. It's Amber Alerts, if you're familiar with Amber Alerts, when a, when a child gets, gets kidnapped, it's looking for them. Um, so it, uh, it's kind of a big brother for good type of thing. And this is with $150 3D cameras running on Windows. So that's cool to talk about it, right? You want to see it? Uh, here is the engine. Uh, da, 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 here. Here is the engine that runs behind it. Now we are totally network dependent here. Um, let me just make sure we're on a network. Okay, we are on my MiFi. All right, no, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, and we're gonna talk about the. Whoa, sorry about that. We're gonna talk about the glaring weakness here in a second. I, I can't really see across the screen. I assume within seconds it ID'd me as Tim. Oh, I can see right here. Yeah, there it is, right in the middle of the screen. So it did a facial recogni recognition on me, and it says I'm 92.8% confident that's Tim. I'm on the left, it's saying, with the red, it's saying I'm really not sure he's a boy because he's so pretty. <laughs> that joke always works. Um, and I'm kind of sort of confident he's within five years of 43. I am not. I'm 54. Um, and then where'd Tim go? I, I should stand back in there. Uh, and then I can't remember what it said for, for my, um, my um, racial profile, but I think, it, I think it was red like I think Tim is white. So we can be, the point is here is we can be wildly accurate in facial recognition with a $150 3D camera, uh, but demographic profiling is always gonna be tricky. And frankly, the CPGs don't care about race, and they, bear, they care about age and they care about gender. In fact, I don't need to tell you that that uh, millennial female demographic is the one they really, really care about. They, that's an influenceable demographic, right? And that's kind of cool, the way it's struggling here. So the big weakness with, with these 3D cameras, I'm almost afraid to back up because of this speaker, the big weakness with these 3D cameras is they can only see, has it let go of me yet? Right, right about there. You can only see about 20 feet. That's the big weakness. But within 20 feet, ooh, we can do a lot. So that's kind of cool. Um, but that's not the demo. The demo is this. So um, facial recognitions are done in three milliseconds with 98% accuracy to 250 million users in a sharded Azure database. That's impressive. That would require a perfect network scenario, which doesn't exist, right? Network is always the issue, right? Okay, but that, that's pretty impressive. So here's the demo. The same technology, the same cloud services that do all the crunching, all this machine learning and stuff, all our cloud services that are doing the facial recognitions, we can do them on 2D cameras, right? It's just you have to put it in front of somebody's face. The great thing about a 3D camera is we can pick humans out of a crowd, multiple humans out of a crowd, and fire pictures of their face to the API. We don't, by the way, we don't save the, the face. We don't need the face. We throw away the face. We build a physics mesh. It's all trig and calculus done by brilliant young engineers like that one, right? Um, I, I just have the face here for the demo. It makes the demo more effective. But we can do it with this. So see, we have two celebrities here in the audience. One's name is Josh, and I'm going to solicit him for the demo. So Josh, if you put my face in the crosshairs, it should immediately come back and say, what does it say, Josh? It says I'm 98% sure that's Tim. Okay, same database it's talking to up there, which is fairly impressive, right? You could authenticate based on that. Um, but what do you think it, it's going to do if I point it at Josh? What do you think it's going to do? It's going to go, I don't know who the hell that is, right? Because he's not in the database. So let's add him hot 
to the database from my iPhone. Make sense? So I'm going to click Add. And it took, I don't know why you're making that silly face at me, but it took four pictures of Josh. What's your last name, Josh? Cool name. Condico. Candico. I like Condico better. Uh, so I'm, I'm adding him hots. Remember, 250 million users. There's not, this is a, a test database. And yes, I'll delete you after it's over. Unless you want to be recognized in a grocery store, a 7-Eleven here in Boston, um, and be targeted with Diet Pepsi. So now I'm going to aim this at Josh and provide it a lightning network. It's going to say, yeah, I'm 99% I'm sure that's Josh, right? But that's not the demo. The demo would be, right, if we grab Josh and put him in front of the 3D camera. That would be a cool demo, wouldn't it? Come here, Josh, and stare at the 3D camera, that, which is a Kinect device. And provided a lightning network. There we go, right there. Yeah, Josh Candico. I am 76% sure that's Josh. 3D cameras are based on infrared, right? They hate the fluorescent lights. This isn't a finely tuned environment for a 3D camera. It, I'm sort of confident he's white. I'm very confident he's within five years of 36. That is true. And uh, Josh is pretty too, and I think he's a boy. Now, also notice that um, if you fake a smile, fake a smile, Josh. Right? Notice that we can track things like that. You can be miserable on the inside, but if you go like this, then the advertiser thinks that you like their advertisement. <laughs> right? OK, thank you, Josh. A good demo. All right, how much? Hey, Josh. That's all .NET. All those services you could pretty much do right now with Microsoft Cognitive Services in the cloud, should you want to add this type of functionality. Um, so now let's get to, in the 12 minutes I have, let's get to um, this. And I'll turn on this and warm it up. So. I don't see anybody with gray hair out there, but this was a big deal back in 1975 or whenever, whenever Star Wars first came out. But if you remember this scene, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're our only hope, right? That was basically a video. That was basically a hologram of a video. With this magical device, with this magical device, um, we can do interactive holograms. Meaning, you know, we pitch, I'm from San Diego, we, we pitched the Padres on doing an interactive Tony Gwynn. Tony Gwynn passed away from cancer a few years back. Wouldn't that be awesome to talk to Tony Gwynn and have him talk back in a hologram? Or Boston, of course, you know, America was founded here. Wouldn't it be great to talk to these 200-year-old people that founded our country? That, that's a great example of an of a, a awesome way. Um, to learn or to play games. You know, I made this bold prediction a few years back, and it, it seems to be coming true. Just realize that we will probably never be able to apply matter to a virtual object. Like on Star Trek, you know, the, the holodeck? In the holodeck, you can touch a tree, right? Or, or, or punch someone, or, or, you know, have a karate lesson. We probably will never, ever be able to do that. We will be able to get rid of wearing glasses, for sure, in the next few years, where, where the room will, will present the holograms. And you won't have to wear this funky glasses thing. Um, this is an amazing computer, completely untethered. Its use cases are interesting. Most of you, I'm guessing, do data apps, CRUD apps, create, read, update, delete. That's what we do, right? All our world is CRUD apps. You know, uh, T, I, M, H, U, that, that's not a HoloLens app. Right? That doesn't make sense, uh, a CRUD app. But there are use cases in learning and in games that totally make sense for this type of technology. And again, it's just .NET. So um, 
Danny, help a brother out here. Let's see if we can do a demo. I'm going to run a, an extremely flaky application. that um, is in a minute here going to, going to, there we go, thank God, is going to show you what I'm seeing on the screen. We're using my little um, MiFi right now. Okay, I should be staring. Can you guys see that spaceman? <laughs> now we'll get the spaceman to do something. You probably can't hear what he's doing, but he's, he's waving at me. And then I can do something like this. I can make the spaceman bigger. And I want to put him on, where's Josh? There's a ballerina. <laughs> put him on Josh's head there. OK. I made him so big. I, there we go. How are we doing on that MRC, Danny? Uh, you're doing well. <laughs> OK. So there's this. I'm seeing all this in real time. And it's, I got to tell you, it's freaking amazing. But there's this really flaky application that we're running up here. It's called the, what's MRC stand for, Danny? Microsoft. We don't know. <laughs> but it's supposed to. It's supposed to be showing you what I'm seeing. It just lags about a second and a half behind what I'm seeing, and then it breaks down, and Danny runs it again. Okay, but trust me, this is pretty awesome. All right, uh, there's two gestures in Hololens. Um, one is this: you see me do this pinch gesture thing, right? I want her to stop. Um, notice that I, I put my finger in front of me. The weakness to the Hololens. I, I, I'm a good news, bad news type guy. The weakness to the HoloLens is its field of view is about 30 degrees, right? If I do where, where it would be natural would be out here, and the HoloLens can't see it. So you have to do this uncomfortable thing and get right in front of me, right? That's one little weakness. And, and why, so why is the field of view so restricted? Battery, that's it. You, you get four to six hours out of this thing. If you wear this thing for more than four hours, you're, you're pretty much a loser. <laughs> You know, it's good for 10 minutes increments. The other gesture is, uh, I got to use that joke again. Yeah, um, the other gesture is this bloom gesture. It brings up the Windows 10 menu and gets rid of it. So that's the only two gestures it has. So I'm going to go over here. Actually, no, I'm going to go here to the second menu of Windows. And then uh, let's do this one. So this is a UWP app that the guys built. I'll put it, can I put it on your head? I'll put it right there. So um, my folks, so now we're running a UWP app. And oh, sweet. <laughs> it is interactive. I didn't know that. Um, so the guys went to CNN the other day, just last week, and said, hey, we, uh, we built a HoloLens prototype for the CNN magic wall. Th this is actually real data. That, so I'm switching from Republicans to Democrats. And it's showing you uh, the delegates committed um, by candidate. And uh, there's no legend here. It's just a prototype. You know, but I think dark red is Trump. And on this side, I believe dark blue is Clinton. And Sanders would be light blue. Anyways, they went to CNN and said, hey, you know, we, you could video this stuff from that cheesy app right there. They said, hey, check this out. What do you think? And they actually said, oh, we love it. So don't be surprised. Maybe not this election. Well, who knows? It's in November. Don't be surprised if you see John King looking like a dork um, <laughs> on, uh, on worldwide TV. So let me show you one more, and then uh, I'll let you guys go off to lunch. Yeah, we're doing good on time. So I'm bringing up Windows. Um, this one I would call the coolest project in internology history. Um, and this is something to be proud of. 
Um, right now, it's running a UWP app built in um, DirectX. It's going to take a little bit to render it. And you can see, I put a, I put a DNA strand, a molecule, on this gentleman's head. Um, what it did is it picked up a um, protein database format file. Um, this is not XML. It's not comma delimited. It, it's its own file structure format for this world, for this um, chemistry and, and science world. And it's uh, like 50 megs. It's a mile long. Anyways, we picked that up and we've rendered this hot. This isn't a pre-rendered 3D object. That was when I ran the app, it rendered this. And we're looking at some form of cancer. Shoot, this could be a beer molecule for all I know. But um, it rendered this hot. So why are we doing this for, for one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world? Well, believe it or not, uh, you probably know this. Can't I got to focus on this so you can see it. Um, cancer is becoming a managed disease. Many parts of cancer, like breast cancer, are truly a managed disease. And drugs are coming out like crazy, making it through clinical trials that are actually saving millions of lives a year. This company that begins with an E and ends with an L, it's Eli Lilly, I might as well just tell you, um, <laughs> has invented a machine Stay with me here. They've invented a physical machine that allows a scientist to enter a bunch of chemistry data and other data, atomic data, molecular data, protein data, and it outputs a molecule, a custom molecule created by the scientist. And it outputs it in like uh, a powder, an aerosol, or a liquid, depending on what type of molecule it is. Not my world, right? Oh, the scientist takes that away, and they create a drug from it. They go to a clinical trial, and they save lives, right? So we are going to build the front end for these people. These scientists are going to put these silly glasses on, and they're going to grab proteins and atoms and stuff like that. And of all the rules of chemistry have to apply. You know, you can't have a nuclear explosion because of the way you combine molecules and an atomic reaction or things like that. And then they're going to say, go, and then boom, it's going to output to the machine, create the molecule. Is that not freaking awesome? I, I think that is so freaking cool. Um, and that's going to be done in the hollow lens. OK, enough of the hollow lens. Thank you, Danny, for babysitting the MRC app for me. Cool stuff, huh? Yeah, oh, I didn't need the applause. So uh, like I said, um, the reason I love this conference is that birds of a feather thing. We're going to lunch right now, and I'm going to take, after I put all this crap away, I'm going to take this HoloLens to lunch with me. And if you want to try it on, you're more than welcome to. Okay? So with that, I think I'm done. I am done, and I'm right on time, aren't I? Yes, I am. First time in my history. Thanks for coming. I hope this was compelling and cool. And after me, you're going to go and stare at code again, right? All right, thank you.